Hello and welcome to this Chopin Competition Studio. My name is Wojciech Bankowski and I'm delighted to welcome Dank Tyson today, mm. member of the jury of this Chopin Competition and also winner of this competition in 1980. Um, when you won, um, you were the first Asian pianist to achieve uh, um, this success. Uh, people talk a lot about the Asian school of piano playing. Do you think it really exists? Is there anything in common between pianists from uh, China, Japan, Vietnam, South Korea? Uh, what does it mean, school? <laughs> That's also it's very general. Um, but if you talk about the basic pianistic school, yes, I would say right now, I think in many Asian countries like Japan, Korean, China, Taiwan, uh, has a very good, uh, let's say, uh, look like a really solid pianistic school for elementary school, high school, until the eleven high school, really, really one of the most solid in the world. And just to build up the foundation pianistically and musically uh, term for, for the future pianists, young pianists. Uh, yes, in this case, I think that uh, it exists now. And if in Japan it's already um, a bit even uh, established school uh, earlier, and then later up to Japan, now we have very strong in Korean, in Taiwan, and now the last one that everybody talking about emerging in China, of course. So of course, even I have a chance to visit a certain conservatory in Shanghai and Beijing uh, 15 years ago and compare with today is totally so different, goes so fast. So yes, and if you talk about higher than high school, go to let's say university level, then the challenge is, uh, is get higher, it's not only pianistic professional base, but also aesthetically mm -hmm. and all kind of uh, principle the interpretation. So need to require higher level. So this one I feel unstable. So it depends mostly um, to, uh, um, to the talent of the student, to the culture they have, and, uh, and then they can develop how they develop. Uh, so, um, and if before we can see the East and West quite separately, but today we all know that with the uh, mean of the uh, communication with the technology today, with the YouTube, with the um, Google and everything, it's so easy to bring East and West together. Yeah, so very easy. So um, I think the border, the getting uh, the barrier between two, uh, uh, two words is, is really smaller and smaller. That is my feeling. Mm -hmm. Do you see any new trends in uh, piano interpretation? It's not your first time in the Chopin competition jury, so you can compare it five years ago. Um, do you think anything new happening that you can now hear on stage here in Warsaw? Um, yes, I think before um, certain group, like an Asian group, um, we can see a bit uh, different way. But today, even Asian, they study in America, they study in, in Europe. So uh, in Europe, many countries different. In Germany, in um, France, in England, and in other countries. So, um, so already they play already differently. So that's not like a before the Asian way. <laughs> um, uh, probably I would add a little bit more when you're talking about the first question about Asian. So um, generally, yeah, so Asian playing have very, very perfect and maybe very high uh, professional level pianistically and even preparation uh, of the intervention is everything is okay. Uh, the only question that even in competition I found uh, rare um, uh, that Asians um, show a strong personality. Mm -hmm. And I think this question uh, is influenced from the uh, Asian society, the tradition that is uh, just a problem. But even today, Asian is not mean. Even you look, still look at Chinese name, Japanese name. But they are, uh, they were born in uh, in Europe or in America, and they 
don't have the same mentality or the culture like uh, other. So um, that is one point about Asian. Second um, thing that I feel like uh, every time is my third uh, time uh, as a jury member, and I can follow that always is not changed. Every time there's some we call controversial and some uh, strong personality, that's always there. That is not changed. And it's quite interesting, I think. And the third one, Polish group. Uh, before I feel that they have a certain um, type of the interpolation and maybe more uh, follow, uh, we call just, let's say, traditional. But today, no. Today, really, if you see, especially this time, even I was so surprised. The fantasy, the, they are played so different way and bring a lot of freedom to, to them and, and uh, with their own imagination. And, and I think it's uh, really very surprising for me. And it, I think it's very positive. So Poles have become less conservative. It's good to know. <laughs> it's good to know. I don't mind which way, conservative or we, we call academic, yeah, or we call that creative, whatever. The power, the convincing, it should be convincing the interpretation. I don't care which direction you go. You can play uh, uh, emotional way, you can play very intellectual way. There's so many kinds, many directions, but if they have a power to convincing, my way is like this, and then, yeah, so then we enjoy that. Mm -hmm. You also play on historical pianos. You have notably recorded uh, CDs for the Chopin Institute on the player and the um, Do you think it makes really a major difference which instrument you use? You're now listening to Chopin played on modern grands. Um, do, do you think uh, the, the experience on the historical piano influences how you perceive these, these performances on the modern piano? Yes, I think in certain aspects it is really different. If, like a jury member, we sit uh, uh, in the, uh, during audition, and not always, but of course there's some moment, and we just close our ear because it's so vibrated, the use pedal is so noisy, and nothing is clear, messy, messy, you know? Uh, because it modern piano is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So um, when you put the pedal, and plus with the acoustic of the horn, the philharmonic horn is fantastic. They have so uh, uh, natural vibration, but it's uh, very careful with the unexperienced pianists that they use the same pedal like uh, in small room, and that they, they have no imagination how it's like echo that's uh, going, and it really is over vibrated, and it's not good. Uh, but with a historic piano, it's rarely happened because even you put pedal, long pedal, it's team keep very nicely articulation. So that is really help when we look to the music score because they compose like a Chopin or even before Chopin, we have Beethoven also that mark many pedal uh, indication. And today, if we blindly looked at, oh yeah, compose, wrote there, we have to do that. But they, they wrote all the indication for historic piano. Mm -hmm. It's not for the modern piano. Then we have to be very creative. Only concerning pedal, I think we have to be very creative to the, on the mark in the music score. Mm -hmm. The other thing, it's, um, it's the um, uh, dynamic. Yeah, so I think historic piano designed for more uh, intimate space. So um, we need not really try the, the, the fox, the, the sound, yeah. So with a modern piano in the big hall, then to cover the, the, the big space, of course you have uh, a suitable power to do this. So that why the way to play in the historic piano and modern piano also how you use the, the dynamic is very different. Mm -hmm. And so the advanced of the history you know, are in short, I would say, um, articulation and warm sound. The warm sound will look like they have a special soul. And history you know, each piano different. They are never the same. So the modern piano may be sometimes very beautiful sound, very powerful sound, gorgeous sound, but you, I, 
rarely I can find something we call that has a personality. That they are a bit good pianos, but they are from one to the other very tough to compare if they have a slightly different. Thank you very much for these insights. Dang Tai Son was uh, our guest at the studio, member of the jury of the 17th Chopin competition. Thank you. With pleasure.